So Digital Voice is a multi-award winning CIC, a community interest company. We're based in the northeast of England, but we work nationally in partnerships with charities and local authorities to empower marginalised people to do creative digital projects. We've been around for 15 years and doing heritage projects for 10 of those. All right, I'm just trying to change my slide. Um, so we um, work with film and uh, video a lot with people in a variety of ways. Um, but um, got interested in heritage work um, because of my interest in local history and archive photos. Um, and this led to um, an intergenerational film project training young carers uh, to work with older people and um, to ask them about their memories. Uh, so they learned how to film those and make films with the older people and the older people would uh, take them around the village where they lived and talk about what that was like. Uh, we also do a lot of um, projects as you'll see in the pictures here with people asking them to archive um, um, film and uh, photos and um, make a community archive for their plays. Um, we started working with Beamish Museum, which is uh, an open air museum, um, and it just added such a lot of interest to our digital skills courses. So they allow people to go along and dress up in, uh, in old fashioned clothes and go to the fair as it was in those times, the farm. It just really brings alive that project. And when we're doing um, filmmaking with people, we can go there and film what it was like back in the day, hear people's memories um, and look at the old maps and archives. We go along and um, find photos on their archive. They've got an amazing people's collection and that just adds to the film. So we're adding those into the films that we're making with people. Um, so when Leighton's Industrial Past was a heritage lottery funded project, um, working with a group of older people and a group of people with additional needs. Um, so we wanted to bring those people together because um, often people with additional needs don't get the opportunity to work in their communities, to volunteer, um, to get to know people in their communities. So we thought that this would be a really good way of doing that. So we trained the people with additional needs to make films, to learn interviewing skills, editing skills, and they interviewed older people in their area about what it was like um, back in the day, so 50s mainly. Uh, and then we went to Beamish to, to bring those memories to life. Um, and both groups got such a lot from it. So the older people would um, collect archives. So they put out on uh, Facebook, you know, come along, have a coffee, bring in your old photos. And then they would uh, scan those, archive them. And um, the people with additional needs would come along and film them. Uh, talking about it. So I'm just going to show you a quick clip from uh, one of those films about uh, the Hoppings, the local fair, which still comes to in Leighton. I loved the atmosphere. I, I remember in those days, you know, it wasn't long after the war, um, we were quite a big farm, there was a big family, so there wasn't a great deal of money around, you know, but the Hoppings was one of our highlights of the year. You know, we didn't go to Newcastle or other towns, you know, um, and the excitement was unbelievable that the Hoppings were here and, and we had four days of fantastic fun, you know. Um, we'd be there every night from school. Um, once our money had run out by six o'clock on a Saturday, and they did open Saturday afternoon, yes. So that was uh, excellent as well, you know. So we spent the whole four days at the Hoppings, you know. Fantastic carnival atmosphere, you know, and I loved it. Yeah. So from that um, brilliant project, which everybody really got a lot from, um, and we had a, a screening, which was absolutely packed out. People just love to engage with those old photos, whether they want to tell their stories or just come along and listen to other people's stories. It just created a real buzz in the village. It was fantastic. Um, and the 
group of uh, people with additional needs wanted to continue to do that. So we looked at other what other heritage um, projects could we do and um, came up with a project called Our Valley, um, Our Valley, Our Place, uh, where the people, same people, uh, came together to continue learning those skills. Um, very simple skills, but using foot photography this time as well. So lots of different photo techniques, editing photos, um, using 360 cameras, and we'd go out into different heritage settings, uh, national trust property, different woodlands, meeting rangers, meeting uh, friends of red kites, learning a lot about the valley, but by using digital skills. So it was the digital skills that what made them want to come out and um, they may not have felt comfortable to go, for example, to a National Trust property on their own, but because they went in a group with this focus of using digital skills, um, afterwards, many said, yes, I would go back there with my family or with, with the group again. Um, so it was really useful, I think, for, for the group to have that focus of digital skills. Um, and having something, you know, to feel that they've achieved something and learned a lot about the uh, heritage. So I'm just going to show you a clip of uh, one of the films that they created, which was uh, at Gibside, a National Trust property in the northeast. Okay, so my name is Lauren Cripps. I'm the Events and Programming Officer here at Gibside, which is where we are today. This beautiful 18th century landscape garden. It's a great place for people to come and enjoy the sunshine. Uh, especially on a day like today. <laughs> Most of what you see today is the brainchild of a gentleman called George Bowes. He became very wealthy through coal mining and he wanted to have the best garden in the northeast. So he ploughed a lot of his money into Gibside and he built the avenue, he built the wall garden, he built the chapel and most of it survives today. So we do a lot of work with young people and children. Um, in heritage settings, again, we asked them to come along and uh, work with older people to make these films about um, local heritage. Um, but we also did a project um, with a group of refugees who, um, to help, Tang and Weir Museums were help, did a project to help them to learn about local culture and heritage and asked us to go along and help them make a film. Um, so they were uh, given access to the collections of Sunderland Museum and asked to choose some artifacts that they would like to make films about. So it really um, got them engaged with the heritage, with those artifacts and having to uh, um, learn about them all and then decide which would be the most interesting to other people. Um, and it also helped with their um, English acquisition. So they had to write a script, film, um, the artefacts and, and make a really engaging film about these that was then used by the museum um, to widen their audience in general and to show what, what they had. Um, so a really successful project and I'll just show you a short clip. The relaxing winter gardens and the objects from different cultures on display in the museum provide a unique backdrop to another world. Only few visitors have the privilege of seeing what lies beneath the museum. Some of the collection in the ethnographic store was donated by Edward Backhouse in the 1800s, 
Edward Backhouse was a philanthropist, Quaker minister, and a writer on church history. The storeroom is crammed with hundreds of objects ranging from petals, shields, and swords to Chinese ivories and other types of artifacts. When we first saw these Chinese shoes, we really liked them because of the embroidery. They were really delicate and they were only three inches long. Women still do painful things to look attractive, like wearing high heels or going on some bits. Sorry about that, um, everyone. I don't know what happened there. Um, so what I'd like you to take away from this is that digital skills is a really effective way of engaging marginalized groups in heritage. And we think this works best when we engage with them first on their own turf, get to know them in the communities where they are, in the community centre or wherever they go, um, and get them involved in the digital project uh, first before uh, engaging in the heritage. And um, so we train them, we give them roles within the film project so that they feel confident. And then we bring them into the heritage settings to complete the project. Not everyone feels that they belong in a heritage setting. So I think we found that this really helps when we've uh, evaluated with people. Investment in time and space for training, for me, is, is the most important thing. Um, learning how to teach digital skills in a, is a great way to engage people who may not be your usual demographic in heritage. But your engagement teams don't necessarily have those skills but they can be taught. So investment in that, if you're not already investing, is a great way to access new audiences. Um, so we have a course that we run with both national and smaller organisations where we teach a lot of these skills on a blended five week CPD course. So we teach them to work with people to capture their stories, use archive images um, and edit those together um, into a digital story and feedback on its effectiveness in teaching engagement skills, as well as those all important digital ones, is excellent. And I'd like to show you a clip from a digital story made by a learner on the course with someone that she supported and spoke to. Joe came to the shop where I was working one day, all in his uniform because he was doing national service. And he said, I'm going abroad. And I said, well, where are you going, Joe? And he said, I'm going to Paris. And I said, what, Paris, France? And he said, yes. He said, if you want to marry me, you can come with me. So that was a done deal, really, wasn't it? So I just whipped round the corner with him to Rick's sister jewels. Joe and I chose a ring. We got engaged. And I went back to the shop and told the girls, I'm leaving. Why are you leaving, Georgie? Well, I'm going to live in Paris with my new husband. So a really charming story there. Um, but it's just great to engage people with uh, archive photos and the skills and not difficult to learn in quite a quick uh, amount of time how to use those skills with your participants. Um, so digital skills are key. People do want to learn those. And by giving access to your archives and your collections in the ways that I've shown above, you can engage a wider audience in different ways. The groups we worked with had never visited the heritage sites that we took them to, but it was something that interested them because we started slowly, we were sensitive to their support needs and introduced them to the archives and collections in a way that was engaging for them. And the excitement of making a film and feeling they were working as a team to create something that they could show their families and friends and their local communities um, was just a real buzz for people. Um, and most importantly, you can use the media that you create with people to develop your audiences. So we like to see people we identify with, don't we, out there. So diversity in your media helps with that. 
And of course, it's great to share on social media. We get so many hits off the heritage films that we put out there. It's just incredible. People do really love to engage with the past, as you all know. Um, so I hope that's been of interest. I'll put me um, contacts in the, there's my contacts there, and I'll put them in the chat as well, if you'd like to get in touch. Um, and hopefully you, you've enjoyed that. Thank you.